Welcome to the FlexiCraft Industries Introduction to Metal Expansion Joints as part of our Flexible Piping Solutions video training series. FlexiCraft has 50 years of experience, and during that time, we've been committed to perfecting our offerings of metal and rubber expansion joints and other industrial flexible piping elements of every type. This puts us in an excellent position to provide perspective for helping you to choose the ideal products, and perhaps even more important, how best to use them. You can find detailed information on each product at FlexiCraft.com after first choosing the appropriate product family. This video presentation will briefly review the most important concepts in the choice and application of metal expansion joints. It includes more detail on these joints than the information in our overview video, which helps to tie together all the flexible piping solutions. We also have video presentations specific to the product families of rubber expansion joints, as well as braided flexible connectors and braided flexible loops. We will cover some important background information, including the thrust load concept, which is also covered in the overview video. Understanding thrust load is essential for proper use of these products. Okay, let's get started with our review of metal expansion joints. Metal joints are primarily needed for thermal expansion of piping. If straight pipe sections between pipe anchors expand without added flexibility, the loads on the anchors will likely be too much for the system to withstand. We see here a model of a pipe run with anchors on either end. Note that the anchors are shown close together just for visualization here in our pipe system model. But in any real system, they would be very far apart. If we first remove the anchors and the pipe heats up, as indicated by the rising thermometer level, the pipe grows as shown. When the pipe anchors are added, and the pipe again heats up and begins to expand, the immense thermal load on the anchors will build until they fail. Now when we add an expansion joint between the anchors, as the pipe heats up and expands, the joint compresses to compensate for the movement, and there are now minimal thermal loads on the anchors and pipe. Although applications are not always this straightforward, most are a variation of what we see here. Adding metal joints is often a key way to handle expanding hot pipes. Metal joints usually have a stainless steel bellows with multiple corrugations that provide them the ability to move. The joints can achieve long lives even in demanding systems such as steam and many others. The bellows are manufactured by mechanical forming methods or preferably through hydroforming as shown here. Hydrostatic pressure from inside the tube forces convolutions into the dies, shaping the bellows. Residual stresses that can contribute to stress corrosion cracking are minimized with hydroforming. Usually either flanges or pipe weld ends are then welded to the bellows, which turns it into an expansion joint. There are three movements that the joints can make. Axial compression or extension, lateral offset, and angular deflection. As we have demonstrated, the most common movement is axial compression due to a straight run of pipe heating up, but solutions and planning for other movements may be needed as well. The thin corrugated bellows is the working portion of the joint, and there are many parameters that go into its design. Thickness, number of plies, corrugation height and width, and the number of corrugations all contribute to the ability of the bellows to move as needed while still retaining pressure. A specifier should normally not attempt to dictate these parameters to the manufacturer because they are interrelated. One point to note on the bellows design is they cannot be made too long relative to their diameter. If too long, the bellows will fail in squirm mode where it takes on an S shape and this restriction in length limits the allowable movement of a given design. The material of the bellows is normally a 300 series stainless steel usually 304 or 316 grade, but can also be in canal for high temperatures and other aggressive services. An integral Teflon lining is available. Protection from stress corrosion cracking and overall chemical compatibility is a primary concern with the bellows. There are different common types of metal joints with different options to consider. The simple single bellows joints are the most common, such as the FlexiCraft single model NLC. The ends are most commonly carbon steel. Primary options for this joint include liners and covers. Liners are usually slipped in to provide either erosion protection or for high flow rates to prevent flutter. Covers protect the thin bellows from potential damage where that may be a concern. The optional tie rods limit the extension and sometimes the compression of the joints. 
The rods loosely fit through holes and lugs that are welded to the flanges or weld ends at Flexicraft's factory, and nuts on the rods prevent them from going through the lugs. Although the single bellows joints are the most common, they don't move very far in lateral offset. For large lateral movements, a universal configuration with two bellows is needed. The longer the center pipe spool, the more lateral movement is possible, as we see here. Longer axial compression from thermal expansion than a single bellows joint can provide is often beneficial and can be supplied by externally pressurized metal joints, such as the Flexicraft model EP. Because the housing allows the system's fluid to pressurize the bellows from the outside, it is more stable and can be made longer to allow considerably more compression. Compensators is a term often used to describe a smaller joint, usually under 4 inches diameter. That also takes advantage of the externally pressurized concept. Compensators are available with threaded, weld, or flanged ends. Sweat ends are available for copper piping systems. So quite a few different considerations and options are available with metal expansion joints, the most important of which we've seen. In a moment, we'll go over some additional application points. But first, Paul Berg from Flexicraft has an overview of the critical concept of thrust load that applies to all pressurized flexible elements. The final application points will then be more understandable. Now that we've added some context with an overview of metal expansion joints, we can take a moment to go over the often misunderstood and important topic of pressure thrust load. This new anchor support load can be difficult to understand at first, but it's critical to both the choices between products and also how they're applied. When you add an expansion joint to a pressurized piping system, you are introducing this new pressure thrust load to the piping anchors. This new force on the anchors is a main reason why you shouldn't just cut a hole in an existing pipeline and add an expansion joint, even though the large thermal anchor loads from the pipe growth would be minimized. So what exactly is pressure thrust load? To understand it, we can start by looking at a bendable straw example, where the bending section represents an expansion joint. If one end of the straw is plugged, and if we could blow into the other end hard enough, what we would see is the bendable section getting stretched out. The force on the plug from the pressure would force apart the bendable section, but not stretch the rest of the stiff straw. That pressure force acting on the plug is the thrust load and is equal to the pressure times the cross-sectional area. We can now go back to our pipe system model, at first without the anchors. This time we pressurize the pipe instead of heating it up. The pipe acts as though it's plugged with the thrust load acting on both ends because of elbows and other ends down the line. Notice there is no movement of the pipe because the pipe wall is too stiff to be moved by the thrust load. But if we cut a hole in the same pipe and add an expansion joint, we have a model like the bendable straw. Now when we again pressurize the unanchored system, we can see the joint will stretch out to failure because it's not stiff like the pipe. When we now add back the pipe anchors and again pressurize, the joint does not stretch out from the thrust load because the anchors are preventing that. But if the anchors are not designed to withstand the new load, they can fail and consequently then allow the joint to stretch out and also fail. Tie rods are sometimes added as an attempt to absorb the thrust load so the anchors don't have to. The issue with this approach in a straight pipe run is that if the joint compresses, the nuts attached to the rods will separate from the lugs. When they separate, they no longer shoulder the load. So trying to use tie rods to handle the thrust load only works if axial movement isn't needed. And we have seen this isn't the case much of the time when thermal pipe growth is involved. Let's take a look at this on our pipe model. We see the pipe system first get pressurized quickly before heating up. At this point, the tie rods are working to absorb the thrust load so the anchors don't have to. But when the system starts to heat up, the tie rods disengage from the lugs as the joint compresses, and the thrust load gets transferred to the anchors, possibly causing them to fail as before. So what is the solution to the new pressure thrust load? Well, one solution is to simply ensure the anchors are large enough to withstand it, as we see them getting larger here. 
Now when the pressure and temperature both rise, the system works as it should. So the anchors must be designed for the force of the thrust load, which is equal to the effective cross-sectional area of the bellows multiplied by the pressure. In addition to the thrust load, a second load, the spring load, is added to the anchors when the joint moves, which is equal to the joint spring rate times the movement. The spring load is usually considerably smaller than the thrust load, and it normally does not cause the confusion thrust load often does. The effective area and spring rate parameters of the joints are listed in our tables and submittal sheets for our various models. These are normally required input parameters for computer piping models when using joints, but the loads can also be simply calculated by hand. I hope that this explanation of thrust load helps to put the use and design of these products into better perspective. Now that we've looked at the limitations of tie rods to eliminate the anchor thrust load in most standard applications, we can explain a special configuration where they do eliminate the thrust load for thermal growth applications. This configuration is sometimes referred to as a Z-bend, which uses a universal joint with tie rods. As described earlier, a universal expansion joint uses two bellows separated by a spool pipe section to allow long lateral movements. If the joint is placed where it will only move laterally, but not axially, added tie rods will never be forced to disengage. This can be set up for piping thermal expansion by placing the joint so it is perpendicular to the main pipe run, as seen here. Again, the anchors would be far apart. This configuration can be quite helpful, especially in larger diameter piping systems. We can contrast the universal joint configuration designed for lateral movement with another double bellows configuration, this time using an anchor base. Sometimes it's advantageous to obtain twice the axial movement by placing a double expansion joint in the middle of a pipe run. The anchor base essentially splits the length of pipe between main anchors in half, with a single joint acting on each half. This configuration can also be used with externally pressurized joints. In this case, the thrust and spring loads from each bellows acts on the anchor base in opposite directions, which cancels them out. Without these loads, this anchor is referred to as an intermediate anchor, as opposed to a main anchor. Main anchors are normally positioned at major changes in the pipe direction, and must be designed considering the thrust and spring loads from the expansion joints, as we have seen earlier. In addition to special considerations with anchors, Pipe guides are also a special requirement with the use of metal expansion joints. Pipe guides usually allow movement in the axial direction only, which prevents a possible buckling instability in a pressurized pipe run with an expansion joint. As we see here, with no guides, it's possible that the pipe run with a joint may buckle as it expands. But when guides are added, we have a stable system that moves as expected. Placement of the guides relative to the expansion joint is dictated for standard design practice, and details can be seen on our website and catalog. The spider type guides are the most popular, and include an X-shaped spider that attaches to and moves with the pipe. But spider guides are not designed to take any load from the pipe beyond keeping it stable. In a horizontal pipe run, it is possible to instead use slide guides that can take a downward load, most commonly weight. The fixed bottom plate is Teflon lined to allow sliding, and has a rating for the load. The pipe is normally welded to the sliding portion in the field, but can also be made with clamps if preferred. That covers the basic choices and considerations for metal expansion joints. We hope you found this informative, and that you'll think of FlexiCraft as the first name in flexible piping solutions. Be sure to check out our other videos including an overview video of all the main options. We would love to hear from you with any questions and to consult with you on your applications. If you are writing specifications, be sure to check out our specification assistance on each product page, which include helpful insights. And finally, if you have a need to extend your flexible piping solutions to any type of industrial hose, please see the website for our division, Hosecraft USA, at www.hosecraftusa.com. Thanks again for your attention and consideration. We hope to work with you soon.